Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel's Making with Marilyn. Now I do all things crafty, but on today's video, I'm gonna use a sublimation tumbler and I'm gonna attempt to make one of those super cute purse tumblers. You know, the ones with the chains and all that. So if you're interested in seeing how this comes out, keep watching the video. Now, before I turn the camera angle around to tell you what all I'm using, if you hadn't subscribed, please consider doing that. And then tap that bell, select the all notifications. That way YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content. Now here's mainly what I'll use in my video. I have my print, and of course it's backwards, it's sublimation, and it's not very vibrant yet. I got this off of Etsy. It was one of eight designs, and it was somewhere around four, four fifty. I'll put a link to this in the video. And I have my tumbler. I have my little tumbler holder, just something I made at home. I have a video for that as well. I'll cut down my image with my rotary tool. And then when it's time to glue on my chain, I'm gonna use this E6000. I like these because you get four little tubes in this one set. All right, so let me go ahead and show you the chain and the hardware. So I ordered these off of Amazon and it was two different orders. I got the four chains from one vendor. And basically you have, I think of it kind of as a rose gold, regular gold. This is a shiny black or a gunmetal and then shiny silver. And then the little hardware that goes on the side that you attach your chains to, I don't have the exact same colors. I have shiny silver and then a bronze. So the bronze is just extra, but I have silver to go with my silver chain. I'm sorry, actually that's the black in there too. So this will match these two chains. And then I have a gold and a bronze. And this gold would work with either of my golds, but I think it matches my rose gold just a little bit better. So I don't have anything for this exactly, but I do have more than two gold ones. So I'll be able to use this one as well. But then I have some extra bronze ones that I just don't have a chain to go with. Now on today's tumbler with this being black, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the shiny black. So for now, I'll put these out of the way. All right, so more about the hardware when we get there. So the first thing that I want to do is just go ahead and cut my image down. You can cut it down with scissors, however you like to. This is just my preferred method. And on at least one side, you need to make sure that you have absolutely no white showing. Now, as long as you have this against the tumbler, if there's white showing at the other end, that's okay but I'm still probably gonna cut it pretty tight. Then after that, I'll go ahead and trim off the top and the bottom, and then I'm gonna be ready to wrap my tumbler. Now, I've already cleaned my tumbler. All I did was I sprayed some rubbing alcohol on it, and then clean it off with a paper towel and then try not to touch it too much after that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by having my tumbler up and my design is flat on the table. That way I can make sure that the seam is going to be straight and it's gonna be straight at the top and the bottom. Now I need to see which side has absolutely no white. And it's this side right here. So that needs to be down against the tumbler. Check that out one more time. Make sure I get that right. Now 
then I'm just going to go ahead and tape this the way I always do. I do have multiple videos out talking about how to tape and what's worked best for me. So if you're having any issues with ghosting or white lines or anything on your tumblers, maybe the tops and the bottoms don't come out so great, you might check out one of those videos. And compared to the amount of tape that some people use, I do kind of do an overkill with the tape. But that's just worked well for me. So I'm willing to do it. Now my paper is a little bit too tall. That's going to try to pucker. So I'm going to have to be really careful. But I'm going to trim that down with scissors just so I don't have that much extra paper. Some people will fold that much over. I don't really want to fold that much over. And what I probably should have done was taped this top side first. I could have flipped it over on the table, gotten the paper even with the top side, and started there and then trimmed on the bottom. But I didn't. Okay, y'all, so I realized I was trimming off some of the stitching, and that's kind of important, so I'm just reprinting this, and then I'll catch back up. Now, while that's printing, let me show you what I'm talking about. There's a little bit of stitching up top, and I was trimming that away. Really, you want to trim from this bottom side on a design like this. It really just depends on what's close to the top, what's close to the bottom, and what's important for you to see on your tumbler. All right, let's try this again. All right, now that I'm paying better attention, what I want to do is I want the top to be really even with the top of my cup. So I'll wrap it around first, then I'm going to put it top side down and let the cup fall to the table. And then I know I need the side with the C to be against my tumbler. All right, so now that I've accomplished that, I'm going to go ahead and put one piece of tape on, then I'll trim the bottom. Now what I should have done is just adjusted my print a little bit more, but it's going to be fine. Not all of these tumblers are the same size. And I learned that the hard way when I ordered a second set of tumblers that was a different brand than the first ones I did. And I just kept my same old measurements and it didn't work out well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this taped up like I always do. Again, just like I said a few minutes ago, if you have any issues with your taping and your tumbler sublimation, you might watch some videos on it. I was having all kinds of problems, and then a man named Industrial Fringe taught me, through me watching his videos, the best way for me to tape. And again, for some people, the amount of tape that I use is overkill, but the tape is really inexpensive compared to these blanks. So I am more than happy to use a little extra tape for good results. All right, so it is time to break out the tumbler press. So I'm just going to get the camera turned around and make sure that this is nice and tight everywhere and then we're going to cook this thing. Now before I even turn this on I want to put my tumbler in and see if it's the right pressure.
All right, so I tighten that up just a little bit. Then I'm gonna remove my tumbler and get this preheating. All right, so my press is up to temperature and it's on Celsius. So if it looks weird, it's because it's on Celsius. Now for my first press, the seam on the tumbler is actually back at the back, so back toward me. So I'm gonna press this for 50 seconds. And I thought I had it set for 50, it was set for 90. So I'll stop it at 40 and then I'll rotate it 180 degrees. So if you've seen me press tumblers, then you know I'm gonna rotate it 45 degrees, do 20 seconds, then 180, do 20, and then we're done. All right, y'all, my table is a mess. Move this a little bit out of the way. And then let's see how the tumbler came out. Because if it didn't come out well, <laughs> there is no reason to waste the hardware on this tumbler. Now when I'm cutting this tape, I'm just making a little snip in it so that it'll tear. You don't want to accidentally scratch your tumbler. Okay, so before I remove this whole paper, I'm just going to peek under there. Oh, I think that looks good. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, that looks really good. Now, you might see some white up here. That's just the paper sticking to the tumbler. So I'm going to go rinse that off, and then I'll be right back. All right, my tumbler's still just a little bit wet, but isn't that cute? I really like how that turned out. And that's how the back seam looks. Maybe I could have done a little bit better, but that's not too bad. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry off the rest of the way, and then we're gonna put the hardware on. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cradle my tumbler in this, but just in case I get any glue, where it shouldn't be, I'm gonna put this silicone mat on it. So the goal is to get the hardware directly on the sides. Now this hardware and this chain isn't really to carry this tumbler around. It's just a look, it's just cute. It's decoration. So if you happen to be selling these, I would put a disclaimer that it's really not supposed to be a functional chain. It's just for looks. Okay, so we have our chain and eventually it'll be kind of like that. You can let it hang down but it'll be like that. Okay, good. I was afraid it was going to cover my design, but it won't. And then here's the hardware. So you have these little screws, and then these little things. I don't know what they're called, but eventually they will screw onto the screw screw them in and then you can hang your chain on them. Really the only thing I need to worry about right now are the little screws. So it's going to be hard for you to see but I want to kind of have my cup up and really figure out where at least the first one should go because I'm going to glue these on one at a time. Okay, so I'm gonna have my screw about even with the word and pretty much on the side. Now, if you wanted to mark these really lightly, making sure that the mark is under where this will go, you could, 
I'm tempted to do that, but I'm not going to. Okay, so I have my E6000. And then I had part of a little coffee stir stick out to dab it on, but now I can't find it, so I'm going to use this toothpick. So you have to take the lid off and then puncture the seal. Now I don't want to do this over my cup in case it spits out or something, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay some down over here. Then I'm going to leave that screw right there. I'll probably replace it with the other one. And then I'm going to add a pretty good dollop on the back of the screw. Now, if you're sensitive to smells, as some people are, you might want to use a mask with this. If I were using a lot, I sure would. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and lift up my placeholder screw and put this right down. Now that I know I like it, I'm going to go ahead and press down for just a few seconds, pressing pretty hard. Now I see a little bit oozed out. Let me grab a paper towel. So I'm going to hold it in place while I just wipe off that excess. Now until I'm ready to do the other side, I'm going to go ahead and replace the lid and then figure out how long I need to let this sit. All right, so you're not supposed to really stress it for good 24 hours, and it does say something about maximum strength may not be reached for 48 to 72 hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit on here for about 30 minutes or so. Then I'm going to come back, turn it over. At that point, I'll have it off the end so there's no pressure on it. I'll do the other side. And then tomorrow, after these have really had time to set, I'll add my chain. Now I am almost done with this tumbler, but I do want to show you something because I feel like I learned a lesson. When I put the first screw on this side, let me just unscrew this handle. I glued down just the screw base. Then when I came back to put this base on, I thought, well, I better check and make sure this ends up okay. So I screwed this on and it really wasn't hanging the way it needed to hang for my chain. So I ended up popping it off, screwing this top part in, and then gluing it back down so that this handle would be straight across. So you kind of need to be strategic about how you glue those on. All right, so this chain you just push in on the chain or on this piece and it opens up. Now, I've only let this sit a little over 12 hours, so I'm not going to be very rough and tumble with it. I'll never be very rough and tumble with it. Like I said yesterday, these are really just for decoration. They are not to carry a heavy, drink-filled tumbler. But that's what it ended up looking like. I think that is adorable. I think I'll take this to work and use it at work. Now, in case you're interested in ordering any of these supplies, I showed you, you get four different colored chains, and then in the little packages of the screws and the handles, you get five of each color. So without mixing and matching, you can do eight tumblers with one set of what you order here. Because not only does it come with this, but it also came with these. Then you're gonna have one handle of each color left over. So if you really want to be efficient, you might order two sets of this. That way you have an even number of screws and an even number of handles.
All right, thanks so much for joining me for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or even suggestions, please leave those in the comment section below. Now until my next video, bye-bye.